fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian wars during the early years of the western United States were caused by officials who used their position to rob the red men. Greed was the driving force behind all their actions, and it was not until the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice that they paid the penalty for their open defiance of the public good. It was the Lone Ranger, more than any other man, who blazed the trail for the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for the Indian country. There's going to be trouble. Hail, Silver! Hoy! <laughs> Two thousand head of buffalo grazed in the basin. On the western rim, two horsemen, dark figures against the sunset gold, had reined up to watch them. One of the men was tall and broad-shouldered. He rode a great white stallion and wore a mask. His companion, an Indian, was mounted on a paint. They're drifting south, Tonto. Ah. And they didn't get any farther than the Wishbone Range this year. There are not many now. They're not to have to go far north. Just a few years ago, there were over a million head. They traveled as far north as White Ridge in the Thunderclouds country. That's right. Indian killed buffalo, have plenty meat for winter. Thunderclouds tribe won't starve, even without the buffalo. Law say them not hunt White Ridge anymore. The law says they can't hunt on this side of the ridge. Not much game on the other side in winter. I know it doesn't seem fair to you, Tonto. The government's taken away one of their best hunting grounds. The tribe will be well taken care of. They'll be given enough beef to last through the winter. Maybe so. No buffalo in summer, no game in winter. Heap bad for Indian. Not with government beef to tide them over. Ah. Well, we stop at the Circle Bar and know they're driving 600 head north for Thunderclouds' tribe. There's nothing to worry about. Some Indian agent, good. Many, bad. That's true. Have you heard anything about the Indian agent in Grantville? Ah, him knew. Might be a good idea to ride up that way. Ah. Agent named Grady, him from east. Then he won't be able to understand the Indians very well. We may be able to help him. Help Thundercloud? Of course, if he needs it. He's our friend. This winter be long, cold. All signs show that. Wind, chilly. Cold come soon. We'll ride tonight. To Grantville? To Grantville and the White Ridge. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. The following Saturday, Bill Connors and Sleepy Hollow left the cafe in Grantville and walked toward the express office where a crowd was already waiting for the stage to come in. Lou Grady was standing in front of the agency building across the street and called to Bill. Hey, Connors, come over here. I don't pay any attention to him, Bill. The stage will be here in a few minutes. we got to hurry. You're always in a hurry, Sleepy. Right with you, Grady. What do you want to waste time talking to an agent for? He's a stranger. got to be friendly. I'll meet you at the office. Well, make it fast. Howdy, Mr. Grady. What's on your mind? Look at that part of yours looping along. Why do they call him Sleepy? <laughs> well, there's two reasons. The first... His last name's Hollow. 
and the second sleepy don't fit them at all. That makes it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it perfect, eh? We wouldn't figure like that back east. Yeah, I reckon not. What do you want to see me about? Well, uh, Bart tells me you've been paid off. Yep. Got any plans for the winter? No. <laughs> Haven't spent a pay yet. How long will that take? Well, Sleepy ought to get rid of his by tonight. You borrow mine tomorrow, and tomorrow night we'll both be broke. <laughs> <laughs> Does it always work out that way? <laughs> Most of the time. Then you'll both be looking for a job. I reckon. Bart needs some line riders for the winter. How would you uh, like a job as foreman instead? What's that? Bart says you make a good one. I got nothing against the idea, Grady, but it's the first I've heard of anybody needing a foreman. What's the outfit? The Circle E. I never heard of it. You will. A friend of mine, a fellow called Ed Norton, is going to start a ranch in White River Valley. Build his home just south of the ridge. Next spring? Before the snow flies. He ain't got much time. Well, he's due to arrive here on tonight's stage. He and his stepdaughter. I've already bought his cattle from the Circle Bar. They're on the way. When they get here, Norton will need somebody to take charge of them. Funny time of year to stock a range. Well, he couldn't buy so cheap in the spring. How about it, Bill? Will you take the job? <laughs> I want to look at this Norton hombre first. Well, you can have until tomorrow to make up your mind. I'll talk it over with Sleepy. Oh, uh, he can sign on, can't he? <laughs> You'll be the foreman. You can hire anybody you want to. Well, there's the stage now. Are well, you going down there? Yeah, too much of a crowd. I hired an Indian to watch out for Norton and bring him here. I thought you said he was a friend of yours. Won't you think it's funny if you don't meet him personally? Well, he'll understand. What's got in the sleepy? Cut that out, you wild Indian. Want the sheriff to throw you in jail? She's the prettiest girl ever set eyes on. When I said howdy, she smiled at me. Yippee! Give me that gun. No, I won't do no more shooting. I gotta get me a shave and a haircut right away. <laughs> What's he talking about? It must be Sharon Day, Norton's stepdaughter. Here they come now. Well, gosh. No wonder sleepy went loco. <laughs> How about taking that job? I'm hired. Good. Yeah, ready. Well, that's fine, Engine. On your way. Howdy, Norton. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Mr. Grady. What kind of a place is this, shooting in the streets? Isn't there any law around here? <laughs> well, Sleepy was just trying to make you welcome, Mr. Norton. Don't forget it, Ed. Meet your foreman, Bill Connors. Oh, so you got that far. Everything's set. Hello, Connors. I hope you know your job. No complaints so far. You'll need two or three men besides Sleepy Bill. Uh, better get them lined up right away, huh? Sure, sure, but... Uh, well, <laughs> aren't you gonna... I mean, Miss... <laughs> <laughs> Sharon. Sharon, this is Bill Connors. Howdy. I'm glad to know you. <laughs> Same here. Ed and I have some business to talk over. Uh, there's a room reserved for you at the hotel, Sharon. Maybe uh, Bill will show you the way. That would be an honor, miss. All right. I'll see you later, Ed. Yeah, run along. Just hang on to my arm, Miss Sharon, and watch the boys' faces turn green. <laughs> Come on inside. I don't like this country. We won't have to stay long. I thought I told you to move on, Engine. Uh, me gone now. Well, out with it. What have you done? Do you have the money? A thousand. Sharon's money. Well, what of it? It's mine to manage until she gets married. What have you done? I've hired some men to build cabins in White River Valley. It won't take more than a week. By that time, the Circle Bar herd will be here. 500 head for the Indians, 100 head for you. But uh, the Indians shouldn't get any more than you, Ed, so we'll split it even. I thought you were going to buy more That's than only that. the first herd. There'll be two more. By the middle of the winter, you'll have 900 head. And only paid for three. Yep. I don't mind stealing from the engines, but we'll be stealing from the government, too. Washington will never find out. Suppose the engines kick. They don't know how much beef they're supposed to get. They'll kick if they're hungry. Only to me, Ed, and it won't get any farther. If they're hungry, let them go out and hunt. They might go after our cattle. The law says they can't cross White Ridge. If you see any on the valley side, shoot to kill. It's trespass, and you're within your rights. I'm not a bad shot. Do what the... A mass man. Ready? I'm giving you a warning. Deal fairly with Chief Thundercloud's tribe and you'll have no trouble. Try to cheat them and you'll endanger the lives of every man and woman here. Who are you? That doesn't matter. Just remember my warning. He's an outlaw. Get the sheriff after him. I'll sue him. Stay where you are. He's an outlaw, sure, and a friend of Thundercloud's, but he can't do anything to us. Maybe he heard us talking. Impossible. I don't like it. We've made our plans too well for anybody to catch us up. We're going through with them, and by the time I'm ready to quit this job, we'll both be rich men. Cabins were built in White River Valley, 
The Circle Bar trail herds reached Grantville. Half were driven onto the Norton Range, half were held in a sheltered valley near the town. Then every week, Thundercloud received his ration of beef, but only half enough to feed his people. With the first snowfall, the game disappeared from the north side of the ridge, and the Indian camp was faced with slow starvation. One night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode into Grantville and reined up in front of Grady's home. Stay here, Tonto. I won't be long. Uh, you tell him what we see. Open up, Grady. What's it? Open up. Who is it? What's the idea? Yes, man. I'm coming in. I got a gun here. You're covered. You won't need your gun. I've just come from Thunderclouds camp. Yeah. You know how many Indians are in that camp. If you don't, you should. What about it? They need more food. You trying to tell me how to run my business? I'm telling you a simple fact. They need twice as much beef as you're giving them. Do you want me to give it to them now and let them go without at the end of the winter? Can't you buy more? Where would I get the money? Right to Washington. Tell them the need is urgent. I wouldn't get a reply for months. Now give me the letter. Let me get... And the answer would be no. The government spent all the money it's going to on those no-good redskins. They won't feel that way if you explain the situation. The Indians are forbidden to hunt south of the ridge. There's no game to the north. They better stay where they belong. They will. Thundercloud's tribe is peaceful. They'll obey the law until hunger forces them to break it. Hunger's no excuse. I've told Liberty Rancher to shoot to kill if he sees an Indian on this side of the ridge. Do you want an uprising? I'm the agent here. I'll manage things my way. Do you realize how many Indians there are in comparison with the white settlers in this section? What of it? We got rifles. I don't like your attitude, mass man. You broke into my office once and warned me not to cheat Thundercloud. You talk like a renegade. I wouldn't be surprised if you were trying to stir up the Redskins and get us all massacred. The sheriff and the posse will be on your trail before morning. You don't want me arrested. If I were, I might start asking questions that you'd find hard to answer. I'm ready to show my books any time. I'll get out of here. I'm going, but I'll be back. In the meantime, give those Indians more beef, or you'll have trouble. A week later, Bill Connors, Ed Norton, and Grady rode toward the two cabins in White River Valley after an inspection of the herd. The ridge to the right was covered with snow, but there was only an occasional white patch on the plain below. You found nice shelter for the herd, Bill. They would have well. If we don't have any more snow. Uh, you're well protected here in the valley. There have to be a blizzard. Hey. Here. What's the matter? Look up at the ridge, coming over the top. Oh, it's an elk. There he goes into the pine. Oh, 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 boy. Oh. He's been wounded. How can you tell? I don't know the way he moved. Some Indian must have shot him. Why don't they learn to shoot straight? Well, it's hard to kill an elk with one arrow. There's the Indian now. If he comes one step farther, he's breaking the law. He's got to finish the arrow. You elk. have a rifle, Bill. Shoot him. The Indian? Of course. I will not. You're within your rights. Grady will back you up. That engine ain't hurting me or the cattle. Just going after that buck to finish him. You heard what I said. Am I right, Grady? Right. It'll teach the rest of them to stay where they belong. Not me. You're the foreman of this outfit, but I'm the boss. I'm ordering you to shoot that engine. Do your own dirty work. Are you refusing to obey my orders? I sure am. I had a hunch you were an ornery and low-down sidewinder from the first day we met. I only took the job because of Shan, but now I'm through. Give me that rifle. You're loco. You're through, all right. I'll pay you off as soon as we get back to the cabin. But that rifle belongs to me. Now hand it over. Brady. Give it to him. If he shoots that engine, you know what'll happen, don't you? It's the kind of treatment they need. Uh, take your rifle. I'm not party to this. Get up there, boy. Get up. Pack your war bag, Sleepy. We're getting out of here. Oh, I just heard a shot. So did I. What was it? For Sharon's sake, I hope he missed. Listen. He didn't. Sounds like a war party. It is. There must have been more engines on the other side of the ridge. They saw what happened. Sleepy, we're in for a fight. <laughs> the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Ed Norton shot at an Indian who had followed a wounded elk over the ridge. A moment later, a whole party of Indians could be seen on the top of the ridge. Their yells split the cold, clear air. They ran toward their fallen companion, and Norton and Grady raced for the first cabin where Ed and Sharon lived. Bill and Sleepy were there before them. All right. Inside, you two. Bar the door. Oh, Ed, what have you done? If that Indian's dead. It's murder. The law's on my side. The law can't help you here. A little while ago, I refused to take orders from you. But now I'm giving orders. And if you want to save your skin, there won't be any argument. Get all the ammunition you have out in the center of the floor. Yeah. Help him, Grady. I will. Sleepy, we've got holes in the deerskin over the windows. Just big enough to see and shoot through. Leave it to me. Bill, are, are they really going to attack? Sooner or later. Uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if that ornery stepfather of yours shot that engine in the back. Did you, Ed? What if I did? That settles it. My ideas about men have changed a lot since I came out here. But you... Why, you can't even be classed as a man. Give it to him, Sharon. If we get out of this alive, I'm going to claim this ranch for my own. What's that? Well, you use my money to stock it. Your money will be paid on the day you marry. That'll be just as soon as Bill and I can get to town. Well, wait a minute. You want to marry me, don't you? Well, yeah, but... Well, don't argue then, Bill. This ranch will be mine, Ed, and I'll be asking you to pack up and leave. Well, what we ought to do is kick him and Grady out right now. The Redskins are coming down from the ridge, but they haven't got any fight with us. They started? You you can't send us out there to die. It wouldn't do any good. They couldn't see who fired that shot from the ridge. They'll hold us all responsible. Grady, get over to that window. Sleepy, the other side. Yeah. Uh, the back, Norton. Hurry, I'll stay here. Bill, can I see? Well, go ahead. They aren't in range yet. I almost wish they'd start yelling again. Yeah, they mean business now. Silver. What's that? It's a man sweat on a wet horse. He's riding into the valley from the east. There's an engine with him. A mess man and an engine. He said outlaw. He's a friend of Thunderclouds. You sure? Positive. You can bring him down in another minute. Out of the way. Oh, you can't shoot him, Bill. I'll give him a chance to show his colors. Rain up for our fire. We're friends. Don't believe him. Shoot while you still got the chance. Why, well, he's riding straight toward the cabin. Get away from that opening, Shan. I won't let you shoot, Bill. Suppose he is a friend. Suppose he's come here to help us. Come on over to the door. You can keep him covered until he rides up from there. You said you'd give him a chance. Uh, all right. Watch out for the Indians. They aren't close enough yet. Steady, mass man. You're covered. Why are those Indians attacking? Ed Norton shot one of them up on the ridge. Now get off that horse. Keep your hands high and walk this way. Can you see a thunderclouds with him, Toto? No, him not there. He's the only man who can stop them. Head back to the east and cross the ridge from that side. Bring Thundercloud here as fast as you can. And what you do? I'll ride toward the ridge and meet them. I'll try to keep them away from the cabin until you get back. There's plenty of danger. Now, wait. Isn't that Thundercloud coming down the ridge now? Him ride horse like that? Not him. You're Bill Connors, aren't you? Well, yes, but... You've heard what... enough, Bill. They're trying to help us. What do you want, mass man? Who else is in the cabin? Norton, Grady, and... Now, we the... came here to find him. And Sleepy Hollow. Tell them all to hold their fire. If you try to make a fight of it, you haven't a chance. But what if they attack? We'll talk with Thundercloud and do what we can. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. He called his horse Silver. Yeah, I heard him. You told that masked man we wouldn't shoot? You'll do as he says. It's a trick. He's a renegade. We're in a tight spot, mister. And he's the only one who can get us out of it. That masked man is the Lone Ranger. little band in the cabin watched the Lone Ranger and Tonto as they rode toward the Indians. Chief Thunderclaw was waiting for them in the front rank of his braves. For minutes that seemed hours, the masked man and the chief talked. At last, Thunderclaw could be seen to raise his arm, and a single file of Indians moved to the east and to the west. They're surrounding us. I told you it was a trick. The masked man's coming back. You won't get here if I can help it. Put down that rifle. Not on your life. No. No. Oh. Away. Why didn't I think of that myself? You'll be sorry, Connors. Here they are. How about it, masked man? Was the Indian killed? He was badly wounded, and he's been taken back to the camp. Are they going to let us go? I've made a bargain with Thundercloud. The Indians are surrounding the cabin, but they won't attack if you don't open fire or try to escape. You'll be safe until dawn tomorrow. Until dawn? What happens to us then? If Silver can make it to River City and back before then, each of you will get exactly what you deserve. What kind of talk is that? I mean that if your conscience is clear, you'll have nothing to worry about. It, it's sort of a truce? 
Yes. What are you going to do in River City? That, that's a long way. Are they going to let you out of the valley? Tonto and me. That's all. Well, couldn't you take Shan along? Oh, I don't want to go with them. You won't be hurt no matter what happens. Well, I wish that I could guarantee your safety, Bill. That's impossible. Mass Manor. I know who you are, and I know you're doing your best to help us. That's good enough for me. We go now? Yes, Tonto. We'll have to hurry. Remember, Dawn will bring you exactly what you deserve. Come on there, boy. Get him up, Scout. The afternoon shadows were beginning to lengthen as the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced across the level floor of the valley to the east. When night fell, a circle of campfires sprang up around the cabin, mute evidence that the Indians were continuing the siege, but there was no sound. At midnight, Bill decided there was no reason why they shouldn't get some rest. Then, toward morning... Good. Yeah? Are the others asleep? Yeah. Even if the masked man gets us out of this, you stand to lose your share of the ranch. She hasn't married that cowhand yet. She will. And I don't like it either. What's it to you? How can I claim my share of the cattle without explaining where they came from? Yeah. You stand to lose plenty. Not if we, uh, get rid of Bill. How? The masked man said the Indians wouldn't stand for us trying to get out of the valley. Whatever he says goes as far as Bill's concerned. He's sleeping now. We could, uh... Hit him over the head. Kill him? No, just knock him out and get him outside, tie him to a horse and give the horse a lick. Send him straight for them campfires. He'd never get past him, Ed. You're right. What about it? Let me do it. I'd like to get even for this afternoon. Careful. Don't wake anybody up. They're all dead to the world. And I can reach him without moving. Easy. Yeah. I'll use my gun, but... <laughs> This is the valley, Walters. We're in time. Those the Indian fires up ahead? Yes. Let them know we're coming, Tonto. Uh, Tai! Tai! They're not trying to stop us. They're putting on war paint. That's right. Seems to me you made a mighty risky bargain. Will they be satisfied? We haven't kept the bargain yet. Tonto, ride to Thundercloud. Tell him we're back. Uh, get him up, scout. We're beyond the range of the fires now. You can see the cabin less than half a mile. Wait, what's the matter? That horse over there. It's heading straight for the campfires. One of them is trying to make a break for it. But I thought that we... have got to head him off. Come on, Silver, faster. If the Indians see him, he's... wait for word from Thundercloud, they'll attack. I can't keep up with you. Faster, Silver, we've got to stop him, boy. And that's it, we're cutting him off. Rain up. It's Bill, Silver. Steady, I'm going to reach for the bridle. Steady, Silver. Whoa, fellow, whoa, whoa. Bill, what's the matter? Is it Grady? It's the cowhand I was telling you about. He's unconscious. Oh. Coming to, is he? He's tied to the saddle. There. What, what happened? Hang on to me. The mask, man. How about it? Can you ride? I'll let it out here. We'll have to figure that out later. Here are your reins. Can you ride? Sure, sure. My head aches, that's all. Then come on. It's getting light. Thundercloud and his braid will be waiting for us to keep our promise. Follow me. Come on, Silver. Get up, boy. Get up. Where could he have gone? Don't ask me. Maybe he tried to make a break for it. His day's gone, but why would he leave? When I woke up, I saw you at the door, Ed. Were you outside? I was just taking a look around. What we got to worry about now is the time. It's getting light. The masked man isn't back. There he is. Oh, I hope it's Bill. It's the masked man. Can we go now? Can you get us out of the valley? You and Norton will be leaving in a few minutes, Grady. Oh, you mean it? But first, we're going to have a talk. Oh, we can talk after we get out of here. When I came here yesterday afternoon, I was looking for you, Grady. You, you were... I'd just come back from the Circle Bar Ranch. The Circle Bar? They gave me all the information I needed. You've stolen 600 head of cattle from the government and from the Indians. That's a lie. You and Norton are equally guilty. No, sir. I'm not in on it. I was just wintering the cattle for him. If we needed a confession, that would clinch the case. As a matter of fact, I don't even own the ranch. It belongs to Sharon here. You can't arrest us. I'm not going to. The only way I could save your lives yesterday was to promise that you'd be punished as you deserved. Hey, 
The Indians have closed in on us. They're right outside. They're waiting to see your punishment. Uh, what are you going to do? Sharon and Sleepy will go free. So will Bill. But he's gone. We, we don't know where he is. He's outside waiting for you. Oh, thank heaven. You can't turn us over to those savages. They'll torture us. They'll... Get moving. No, listen to them. You can't do it. Remember what I told you. If we return before dawn, you'd get exactly what you deserve. I'm outside, both of you. I didn't kill that Indian. He was only wounded. Sharon, honey, it's all over. Oh, Bill. Who's, who's that man standing next to the chief? Another good friend of Thundercloud. We're another renegade. Here are your prisoners, Marshal. Marshal. Put out your hands, you two. Jim Walters, the United States Marshal of River City. You're under arrest. You know me, Chief Thundercloud. You know that my word will be kept. These men wear handcuffs now. The great white father is angry with them because they've stolen from you and hurt your braves. They will be placed in jail for many, many years. Your heart will not be troubled again by their evil spirits. <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.